Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Winifred, and I'm now known better as Lena's wife. So just for everyone to know here. Um, Dr. Adrian, thank you for giving us this opportunity to be here. We are humbled, but more important, we are very privileged because we've had Leonard with us for 13 years longer than we would have had it. So we're very privileged. We've got our guests. We've just come off my daughter's wedding. So that was another celebration we just had. So we brought our guests along because I couldn't leave them behind. Um, so before I say a few words, I just want to add a disclaimer. I am only here because I'm riding on Leonard's coattails. It is all his effort to get us here. Leonard and myself have been married, have been together for 41 years. We've been married for 33, and we've been on this journey for 13 years. Um, I don't think I can share the entire story in 10 minutes, um, so because it's been a 13 year long journey. But what I am going to do is I am going to share the impact brain research has made and continues to have on Leonard and our family and the thousands out there who may not have that opportunity that we have had um, and to live this long after severe brain injury. Um, so 13 and a half years ago, Leonard suffered massive cardiac arrest while asleep. Um, it was in the dead of the night, no pun intended. Um, I was awakened thinking he was having a bad dream or he was just snoring loudly. Um, I had no idea this is where it would lead us. Um, he literally stopped breathing by the time the paramedics arrived. His prognosis was brain anoxia due to the cardiac arrest. That is massive injury to his brain, which I don't need to tell you, I guess, to this room, um, due to the lack of oxygen. So in plain terms, for someone who has no idea what this means, we were told he was brain dead. He was not given much time to live. In fact, I was encouraged to take him off life support at that time. Well, as you can see, I made a different decision. Um, he's right here with us today. So while the journey has been filled with heartache, despair, anxiety, fear, helplessness, it has also been filled with faith, love, support, healing, achievements, new connections, and tremendous hope. The work done in the field of brain research is critical to us finding opportunity to live the best uh, opportunity to give the life Leonard needs to live to his fullest. While our loved ones, it may seem, don't have a voice, their brain still functions within them, and Leonard is living proof. While on this journey, we have, been, we have worked tirelessly to give Leonard the best life we could possibly offer him. He has had the opportunity, opportunity to be part of research, and we pray someday, soon, he will himself articulate his journey for us human beings to understand. Research can help open new pathways for learning how our brain functions and the importance of not giving up. I have used varying techniques I have read through the years in different research trials to stimulate his brain. The possibilities that neuroplasticity offers, intervention at the right time, at the right moment, in the ER, and most important, not giving up. Just because someone told you it was not possible for him to live. So that's what research can do and does. It pushes the boundaries of our limited knowledge and forces us to find ways to make life better. The two books I read on this journey in particular that helped me better understand the state Leonard's brain was in was the book um, My Stroke of Insight by Dr. Jill Bolte and The Brain That Changes Itself by Dr. Norman Doidge. 
Um, and no, I'm not plugging their books. I'm just telling you what I read to help me. I'm sure they don't even know who I am. Um, so while on this part of our journey in our lives, we traveled across Canada, uh, from Ontario to Vancouver. I wanted to make it possible for me to take Leonard back to our home, Goa, India. That's, these are the pictures from there. Because that was the trip we were planning for the night before this happened to him. And I promised him that when he came through, we were going to make that happen. But for me to make that happen, I had to test to see if he could even stand a flight. So we did the longest flight we could take in Canada across to Vancouver. And it was a success. He did wonderfully well. But then COVID happened. And though we were ready to go to India, we couldn't because COVID stopped us. But then finally, in January of this year, we finally made the trip. Um, so 13 years later, we finally got the trip to go back to India and making plans with the flight and the airlines and living arrangements and accommodations and getting his house back home, his ancestral home ready for him to be there, you know, able to move him. The airlines couldn't understand why we were flying without a stretcher without a medical assistant and without an oxygen tank. So he proved to them that he could do it all without that. So we made the trip to India with our son and spent three weeks in January with him. Those are pictures from our trip. As you can see, we met family, friends, we traveled, we saw places of interest. He got to spend three weeks back home and he enjoyed it. So Dr. Adrian's team has worked with Leonard and they diligently have tested and tried technology to help find ways to communicate with Leonard. And while the technology Dr. Adrian's team may not have provided the results they were looking for, um, Leonard certainly presents them a challenge because they need to keep working to find that technology to communicate with him. So Dr. Adrian, you can hire me because I can speak to Leonard. <laughs> Um, so while he continues to prove to us that there is a possibility that our brains can rebound from trauma, if only we give them time, if only we give him time, I believe science and faith can coexist. So on this journey of ours, the additional ingredient I will add is unconditional love. And that is Leonard's love for his family. He pushes himself every day so that he can be with us. Um, I will share a major failure and a major success for Leonard on this journey. His major, mm, I'll, I'll talk about the failure first. The first major failure, he may start coughing because he doesn't like me talking about it, but um, all through our lives, every debate we had was inevitably won by me. And he always wanted me to shut up. So I have to say he failed in that attempt because I have not shut up since this happened to him. And I have been his mouthpiece. And I'm just so grateful I was able to do that. His success. All these years prior to this happening, he tried to convince me how important it was to have patience. He clearly succeeded because I have learned that in these 13 years. So I pray that with continued research, you all will find ways to explore the potential of our brains, each one of you in this room and globally, working in this area or in this field, to expand the horizons that Leonard and others like him need. Dr. Adrian and his team are doing just that. And for that, we are deeply grateful but lots more is needed. Leonard and myself will always be willing participants if it helps. My utopia is that someday a comprehensive plan of care for someone like Leonard will include physical therapy, nutritional planning, community support, occupational therapy, speech therapy, mobility devices, medical support, Complementary forms of therapy, such as chiropractic, acupuncture, acupressure, they have all helped Leonard. 
all working alongside research. That, I believe, is the gold standard of quality care for someone with brain injury and for continuous improvement in the field of health. As families, we commit to bringing the unconditional love that is needed to pursue a better quality of life. But we need a commitment from science with its research and government with its funding to help support us on this journey. I continue to pray that for folks like Leonard, going forward, they will no longer get a death sentence, but instead a life reprieve earned because of the development of research, being focused on the brain today, and because governments choose to prioritize this area of research in their budgets. And that all of you here today and across the globe working in this field, don't give up. Thank you and God bless.